Are you still on the fence about creating your own podcast? Listen, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. It's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your very own podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so many more. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hey y'all, it is season two. Ooh, it feels so good to say season two. It's like y'all love me. Like a lot of people were asking, when is the second season? I want more episodes and we want to hear more of your perspective. So here we are again. And I really do believe in quality over quantity because I didn't just want to continue just putting out episodes that that really didn't add value to your life or add good energy to you, you know? So um, I like to create content organically. So I like to let life happen a little bit. And now I'm back here with season two. So I'm going to dive right into this episode because I know you all are probably salivating, waiting to hear what does this girl have to say about insecurity and guilty. I... uh, was someone who entered a relationship and was behaving um, very ugly, (laughs) ugly, like insecurity is like a nasty, 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 nasty bug. It's almost like a cancer because it just takes over and runs your life. So I'm going to start from the beginning. So um, we, I've been dating, the cat's out of the bag. I've been dating for the last year and it has been an amazing journey of black love. And it feels good to be in a relationship that's so grown up and it's constantly evolving. And we want to learn each other and speak each other's love languages. And we value our space and we find time for each other. And it, we are really molding our lives into one another. And, and just day after day, we continue to shed our single selves. And it's not always pretty. We've had some ugly moments and most of them have been centered around my insecurities. So he grew up um, in a family, mom, dad, two brothers, and um, they spent time together, and he really had that love and bonding that I that was ripped away from me. I grew up in a household, um, early memories of my parents fighting, and then I lived with my grandmother, and I say all the time my grandmother was my first bully because she would compare me to my sister who was fairer skin and lighter skin and just talk down to me all the time. So my poor self-esteem did not stand a chance unfortunately and then elementary school middle school I went to predominantly white or Latino schools so it's like you being made fun of for talking white by the black kids and then you getting made fun of by pretending to be white by the white kids and then you know you don't speak Spanish with the Puerto Rican kids and they talking about you in Spanish like it was just amazing (laughs) how I survived middle school um, and high school. So I just kind of became the class clown to deflect any attention off myself. I put attention on other people so people wouldn't look at me. Um, I always never felt like the pretty girl in school ever, ever. I always wanted to be one of the pretty girls and those girls always were dressed nice. They had the long hair. Um, You know, I didn't have a skin complex or anything because, you know, I I didn't think I was... um, but ugly, but I didn't think that I didn't have the confidence enough to tell myself that I was one of the pretty girls. And, um, so we decided to go to therapy as a couple and our therapist is amazing. Shout out to Scott. Um, and he has been helping us really kind of start back and rewind and trying to get to the root of what is making me insecure and why am I acting out this way? And let me just dwell on insecurity for a little bit. It is a nasty bug. It is terrible. Um, I mean, it was so bad. And and 
it was so bad to the point that my anxiety and my insecurity would like link up together and get like really drunk and high and just go on a tangent because I would create these delusions in my head, convince myself that it's really happening and then catch an attitude for no reason. And then I couldn't, he would ask what's wrong and I wouldn't even be able to tell him like, you don't know why you have an attitude. You just got an attitude. And I, I, I know I'm not alone when I say this, like, it's not even like, it's not even PMS either. So you, some of y'all is like, Oh, it's probably just PMS. No, it's not that it is often, um, I would need constant validation. And it's like the insecurity is like, if he doesn't tell you right when you think he should or your partner should tell you that you look good or if they don't notice it, notice something that you change right away or if they don't tell you they love you all the time. It's like that type of stuff makes you tick when you're insecure and just needing that constant validation where it, 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 you you kind of disregard all of the other things that they're doing to show you even more that they love you. So one of my issues was I did need a lot of constant validation. And it's so ironic because you take selfies all the time, but I, I'm, I'm going to be the first person to put it out there. Some people in my heart of hearts, I truly do believe that some people share pictures just to share with friends and Hey, I'm happy. We had a great time at the zoo, but others of us, and I know I'm not alone. We share those pictures when we need that validation. We breathe those likes sometimes. It's almost to confirm like, uh, cause you almost after a while, I don't know, maybe it's just me. You almost kind of feel ugly after like you post a picture of you looking real good every once in a while. Like I do. And everybody be like, dang, you fine. But then it's like, you post the basic picture and it's like, dang, am I ugly for real? Like, <laughs> And maybe that's me. <laughs> that could be another one of my delusions. But anyway, um, that was my problem. I wasn't seeing that he was taking the time out to really mentor my son and build a true bond with my son and incorporate him in things that we did. I, I, I was ignoring that. Because I was so hell bent on like, dang, you ain't noticed that my I changed my hair. First of all, I change my hair like every other week. So could be cut him a little slack for me in my case. Like it could be hard for him to keep up, but I didn't know how to love myself. And when he didn't give me that validation that I thought I needed, I made it a huge, huge deal. Um, and all of that is just driven by insecurity. So it was ugly. And he threatened to leave me. He was like that. He was like, if you don't get that shit under control, he's like, you have to look at my character. And I have another episode on that. You have to look at my character. Look at the things that I'm doing. You, you so into yourself and being selfish and caring about you. Are you not even pouring that same energy into me that you asking from me? Ooh, ooh, he, I, oof. Y'all, I couldn't say not nothing at all. So I had to change. Like this was not a lot of women. I uh-uh, I wanna laugh. I ain't finna beg after run after no man. No, no, no. It's not running after a man when someone is really trying to help you grow. He wasn't telling me no wrong. And I had to put on my big girl panties and hold myself accountable. And and who wants to be insecure? Who wants to continue living with insecurity and, and being insecure in a relationship? Because would he cheat on me? No, you have to look at his character. And that's where trust comes in, you know, so it is insecurity really in a relationship. It does not help you if you are insecure. You can't fully blossom into having the relationship that you want to have if you are constantly thinking that your mate is going to cheat on you because why are you with them? And of course, yes, when when you are fully vulnerable with someone, you are vulnerable. That That's just that. And you may, there is a room for that to happen, for you to get hurt. However, that's why you date. This is why we are taking this time to really dig, dive deep into each other, um, which is the importance of going to therapy. Either If you're going separately or if you're comfortable to go together, go together. But we had to really make a commitment to this. I did when I said, I want to be here. I do want to get better. And he was there 
he's there to support me every step of the way. So he not only said like, okay, we've identified that you do have an insecurity because it ain't me. This is all you. You making all of this stuff up in your head. So not only did we identify this and I still love you and I still want to be with you, I'm going to help support you through it. I ain't leaving that because <laughs> what is that? Come on now, really? So um, we go to therapy together. Shout out to Scott. But I do have individual sessions on my own to just to deal with some of the trauma. And we've uncovered um, a lot of things from my childhood that was fueling my insecurity and my need for validation. One I had no parents in my really hardly in my life that were active that was that were active in my life. I didn't have a father telling me that I was beautiful, telling me that he loved me, taking me to father daughter dances. I was stripped of all of that, and then my poor self esteem didn't even have to have a chance living with my grandmother. She would compare me and my sisters all the time, and then my middle sister was is fair skinned with long hair. So just imagine that in the black household at that time in the 90s so this she's the holy grail of good hair you pretty so I had already a horrible horrible reflection of myself I did not um like who I was and then what made it worse I got sent to all white schools so I didn't like my name I used to want to change I wanted my name to be Ellen so bad I hated the texture of my hair I wanted I I couldn't understand why my hair wasn't um as free flowing as my white classmates like I, I really hated myself as a little girl and then when I got to middle school yeah I had friends but I kind of turned into a class clown to deflect attention away from myself because I never felt like I was those pretty girls with the with the light skin and the long hair and they always had you know um all the good shoes so they would have on the white air force ones or they would wear jordans and they had on they von dutch outfits and all of you know just their the the wraps so the flat wraps was in style back then and they would always have the longest flat wraps and then mine was just grazing my neck so <laughs> I just was not that. I always was kind of someone who just kind of fell to the back, to the wayside. Um, And that comes out when you're an adult. And then it's like, well, you you take a lot of selfies. You, You do all of this. And it's like insecurities also come from a place of lack. Um, you feel like you're lacking something. So just like how women who get their bodies done, it doesn't necessarily have to be that they're doing it for attention. No, it's because they feel that there's a lack. So maybe the butt is a little flat. You lacking a little bit right there. So I'm gonna plump it up or my breast. I'm I'm lacking the the bread. I, I want to fill out this shirt how I want to, you know, so I I have a lack. So let, let me, you know, go and fix that. So in, insecurities are from a perspective of lack as well, where you always feel like it's just not enough that you're, you're always lacking something. You got to change something here. You got to be this, you got to be that. Um, and almost wanting to change ourselves and not really being grounded in who we are. And it's because we don't know who we are. So my childhood had a lot to do with what was driving me being just so insecure and unstable in our relationship. And it's, it's almost embarrassing to admit, but I know I'm not the only woman out there like this, where my insecurity caused me not to trust my partner almost with my heart because it's like, oh, you're going to do this. Oh, you're going to do this. If someone is going to cheat on you, that that's going to be their choice. That's a grown person. There's nothing that you can do about that. It is... You can't prevent it from happening, you know, and I think that's what so many people are afraid of. So we try to prevent it from happening so bad that we end up sabotaging the relationship, you know. So I didn't want to do that. And I didn't want me, someone to to waste their time feeling like I'm just pouring all of my bad energy and bad chi into this relationship. So I, I didn't want to do that. So this episode is running away from the insecurity and learning how to let it go. And 
Because if you don't stop your brain from just going on and on and on and creating these scenarios in your head, it is only going to get worse. You become paranoid. You start going through phones. There is no reason that you should be going through your partner's phone, especially if you would not want it done to you. If you ha- feel like you have to go through your partner's phone, it's not worth it. You don't need to be with that person because I don't want to be up in my bed with somebody that I can't trust. If you don't, know who's laying next to you, then you need to take a little bit more time in doing your homework. So I have been dating in separate houses, not moving in. Um, Technically, we'll get that. We'll get to that in another episode. But we had to kind of hit those stumbles to realize like you, you really do need to take your time in getting to know someone and learning each other and valuing each other and understanding your past. So a lot of people, they do take time to work on themselves when um, they get out of a bad relationship. I did do that. However, that I worked on myself, what, six years ago? And my son literally is six now. So right when I got out of the relationship with his dad, I worked on myself then. I went to therapy on and off, but I felt like I was good. I was fine. I was secure in who I was. And at the time, you know, I was single. I I wasn't risking my heart, you know, being broken. So I was secure in myself at the time. So a lot of these insecurities that I had about myself um, didn't come up because I have attention coming at me from every single direction. So I never had to want for it at all. Like literally, I, I... I could have any person I want to, like a a list of guys in my phone at any given moment. And, you know, you just, you get tired of that. You you really do get tired of that after a while. It's superficial. Um, I'm worth more than that. There's more value to me than that, than just kind of those nothings. Like those things aren't filling me up anymore. So I want my cup to be full to the brim with something that's a little bit more meaningful going down. Um... So you have to stop your brain, like literally stop, because now you have emotional insecurity overload. I don't even know if that's a term, but you have to kind of bring in some logic with that and remind yourself of the person's character. Who are you dating? Will this person hurt you? Or, you know, would this person really cheat on you? Have they ever cheated on you before? Have they ever given you a reason? And then start reminding yourself of the things that they're doing or um, how happy you are or how he told you he loved you just yesterday. Start reminding yourself of the good and eventually your anxiety will start to quell. It's like I literally had had to stop and do that sometimes because I was not used to everything just being okay. Like literally, it sounds stupid, but I was literally not used to everything being okay in a relationship, I'm just used to some bullshit finna happen. Like literally I'm used to, to somebody finna DM you at three in the morning. You know what I mean? Like I'm used to that. And literally nothing was wrong. And here I am tripping for no reason, you know? And a lot of women would say they wouldn't take it. They'll be like, well, I'm just going to be single. I'm just like, and not, and not work on that ugliness in themselves all for the sake of, they don't want to feel like they're chasing the man. Uh, Um, it, it it sounds foolish, um, and I, I just don't think like that because at the end of the day, even if he and I do not work out, I still took the time to start working on that and addressing some of that trauma, and um, it's been really beneficial to share in that journey with him so he can really understand where I come from and understand why I move in the way that I move, and we can create... Um, new memories and new traditions and new things together to um, help me feel a little bit more secure and loving myself. The best advice I got, shout out to my homegirl, Dahlia. And um, I was getting my nails done. She was doing my nails. And I was telling her, she was like, girl, what? She was like, you don't love yourself. And she said, you got to get in your zone. She was like, put the kid, put the kiddos to bed and, you know, 
just get a real good vibe going on in your room or in your bathroom and take your clothes off or just put on something as to where you feel comfortable enough because I'm not gonna lie I'm not fully comfortable looking at myself with no clothes on um so I put on like a t-shirt and it's you know play a song that you just love that makes you glow that makes you light up and it could be or it doesn't have to be something fancy or R&B it can be a rap song a twerk song something where you feel like yes this is my shit and just start dancing moving she said and she said you know look at everything that you think is a flaw and tell it that it's beautiful and I've never and I I said girl that's the best damn advice I think I've ever received like and people would and and don't get me wrong people I've had therapists that that gave me articles and ideas about self-care but not self-love. And they're like, oh, look in the mirror and tell you yourself you love yourself. And eventually you'll believe it. Yeah, that worked for some people. But that just didn't work for me. Because I guess I'm a cynic in some sense. It, that just felt silly. And I'm like, I, I need something that that I, I can relate to. I'm not one of those people that just can um, write things and internalize it. I'm a more hands-on type person. So, um Definitely, uh, I really appreciated that advice. And I, I started, I'm not going to say that I've gotten to the point where I'm fully comfortable comfortable taking all of my clothes off, but um, I, I'm getting there. And I'm writing letters to myself and I'm wearing my natural hair more and being okay without makeup and small things, definitely, definitely small things. And um, I don't want to wear my insecurities no more. I don't want to wear them in posting a million selfies for no reason, posting designer things that I have. Like, I don't need my insecurities to speak louder than who I am. I really want people to just see my character and see me as a good person and see me as someone who loves her business and her son and is happy. Um, so yeah, this is the end of episode one. Let me know what you think um, about this. You can definitely inbox me, text me, or email me at speakyourtruth@iamalicia.net, And just let me know what your thoughts are about this episode. And this whole season will capture a tidbit of my relationship. And I'm no relationship expert, so please do not. <laughs> I am not under the guise of being an expert in any sense. But um, sometimes women who were broken or came from a broken home or were insecure or just had bad shit happen to them and they didn't really work on it or address it. It comes out in their relationships where a lot of us don't really like to take accountability and speak on it. We just say all these niggas ain't shit and we really don't sit down and really assess our bad habits or our patterns or our choices in men. Um, so let me know what your thoughts are. And, you know, I'm all about speak your truth. I'm putting my truth out there. I don't care. Talk about me. Judge me if you want to. Yes, I was someone who's insecure. And I believe all women have something that they are insecure about. So if you don't, glory to you. But I did. So I am working on me and loving me. Um, but the rest of the season is going to build on to one another so I dive into um family and I dive into friends diving into finances diving into being um co-parenting and how that works so um hopefully my relationship advice um or excuse me relationship experience I should not say advice hopefully my experiences and my personal opinions will kind of help uh, maybe answer some questions that you had or maybe you have gone through a similar similar situation. So hopefully my opinions will help. But until then, remember to always talk your shit and speak your truth. And I will be back for another episode of This is 30.